Hello YouTube, this is Elok and this is my tech review. Today we're going to talk about networks and especially the networks which you have at home. Uh, most of us got Wi-Fi access points of different sorts and kinds, some switches maybe, it depends on your infrastructure and how many systems you run at home. Your network setup might vary, but general theme for all home setup and installation is you definitely gonna have Wi-Fi, you might have some network access switches, and you have probably connectivity to your systems over the cable, over Ethernet, which will allow you to faster speed and so on. So today we're going to talk about UniFi and especially for UniFi configuration. In most UniFi configurations at home you will see gateway, maybe switches and access points. The access point is most popular product for UniFi right now because it's doing mesh setup and it allows you if you have many access points, depends on your house and depends on your setup, you might want to choose to have many with a smaller range, but that will allow the transition of the clients between these access points to be smooth and without any interruption of the connectivity. At the same time, if you have access points, it will maintain overall throughput of all the clients at the same time, while if you have only one single router, for example, with integrated Wi-Fi antennas and stuff like that, then your, the more devices you will get into that connected, the slower it's going to get. Today we're going to talk about UniFi Cloud Key. Why would you need Cloud Key in your UniFi setup? Well, the UniFi setup is driven by UniFi controller. You cannot really set up access point without having UniFi controller. There are two things which you can have for UniFi controller. You can run it on the dedicated machine, which will be Windows or Mac OS or Linux, or you can have it on the Cloud Key. Why would you have it on the Cloud Key? One, you want your UniFi control to be available all the time. And for that, you either have to run your computer 24-7, which would host your UniFi controller, or you have to have dedicated hardware. Uh, UniFi controller is the one which is responsible for all the roaming between your devices, all the optimization of the network traffic and all the other things, which will allow you to run the network and Wi-Fi access smoothly without any interruption. So we got that, that UniFi controller has to run 24-7. The second thing is that UniFi Cloud Key will allow you to connect uh, to different sites without any issues over VPN network. It's just going to build the connectivity on its own. You don't have to do much. Uh, but even though that might be not your case, uh, but for some of the companies, the ones which are selecting UniFi Key, that's one of the key advantages to be able to build VPN tunnels between the sites without any problem. Number three is you might have get access to UniFi controller from the Ubiquiti website and that's where you have it your configuration is stored in the cloud on UniFi servers on Ubiquiti servers and you can access them and manage them from anywhere anytime. Another advantage of UniFi Cloud Key especially generation 2 the ones which we have right now is Gen 2. The Gen 1 was also a very small and portable device but the biggest concern with this that device was that it wasn't having any battery and UniFi Control is driven by the database which will keep track of all your devices and it doesn't really like being crashed especially when the power suddenly got pulled out from your system so UniFi Cloud Key 2 um, right now has integrated battery and if it's going to be losing power then you can have connectivity you can have enough time to actually gracefully shut down database and then the power comes back hopefully it's not going to take much time then you're going to have your database and controller running again without any interruption so I got UniFi Controller Gen 2, I got the one which is without hard drive, uh, there is another version of that which would have hard drive. This one got a flash storage inside which is sufficient enough to host the database and get all the necessary files and operating systems running. But if you want you can get the one with the hard drive, that one I would recommend to get if you specifically run surveillance products like cameras and stuff, then you will have enough storage to keep all your data and all your clips from the cameras on that UniFi cloud key. All right, so let's get unboxing on that and get it integrated. And also I wanna put in this video information how you can migrate existing controller into cloud key. I used to have my controller on my system, on my Mac Pro, but uh, this machine has recently become a little bit unstable, so I, and it's time basically for me to migrate this all to UniFi cloud key, so I don't have any interruption. The controller, uh, the cloud key here is very versatile. It can be charged 
it's going to be actually powered on by uh, power of a Ethernet cables or it can be charged and used as a power source like normal USB-C. The one which is with the disc, a little bit more demanded on the, you know, on the amperage of your power supply for USB-C, so you have to get really the one which has got power delivery options. But this one, the simple one, is I can charge it with a regular USB output, just power walls. One, one amp is enough. You can use iPhone charger to actually power it up. Alright, so let's go unboxing and we'll talk more about this. Alright, so let's open the box. As you can see, the packaging is very nice, similar to what you see from Apple products as well. It's wrapped with a plastic, so we'll cut it off very accurately. So it's nice and clean. Okay, like so. And the other side. And right here as well. So this way we can open it up nice and smooth and it's a very nice packaging similar to what you see on iPhones, pretty much identical actually. So let's remove that plastic and you can see the picture of the actual cloud key is that small. There is also the sticker on the back indicating that that's genuine product. So make sure you got that when you buy one. So there is an instruction set here, but it's not too much there. There's one little piece of paper indicating that the cloud key and on the back, you will see the connectivity side of the things. And this is actual cloud key. It's nice and solid metal uh, cover, um, metal casing, good for thermal control. Let's open up. And that's how the cloud key looks. So there is a front display and on the back you see power over Ethernet port. You see USB-C power button and slot for micro SD card just in case you need extra storage for the backups. And that's pretty much it. All right, so I will be connecting this Unify key uh, to my network and to USB-C adapter over here. So that's going to be my power and that's going to be the network cable. It's not necessarily has to be connected directly to Unify switch or anything. As long as it's on a network, that's fine. So let's get that going. So let's connect this and get the network connected as well. So now it's blinking up. As you can see, that means it's going to start up. And we should be able to find it once it's get the IP address. It's going to be displayed here. From DHCP, and once we got it, we will go to, net, to the, its interface on my Mac. So system booting up, the IP address is displayed, and it's also showing you this nice logo that you can download the Unify controller for Apple and for Google Android, and use it from your phone to control and set it up. We will go from the Mac OS, and go to the Chrome, and just use that settings to get the controller going, and then import the settings from my previous controller, which I used to run on my Mac. So now it's going to be running off the cloud key. All right, so now we are on the page for Unify key and we go to Unify cloud key first. So default password is UBNT, UBNT. So we enter that. And the first thing it will let us do is to change the password to the new one. So I'm going to use UBNT and my new password here. All right, so now we go to configure. And from the configuration page, I'm going to change the IP address to be static. I want my Unify key to be on a static IP, which I have 10. My subnet mask. And we'll have to save that. And now we'll have to go and um, do the updates. But before I do that, I have to go to the Chrome and re-enter my IP address. So it will go in again. So now we're back to Unify key again. And IP address is the one I specified. Okay, go on to login, saving passwords, that's fine. We go back to configure. And before that, you will see you can confirm the existing firmware level and Mac and IP address. 
From here, the one thing you have to do is just go to update because you see the update is available and you want your Unify key to be on the latest and because that will update also Unify controller version and I need that to be on the latest as well. One thing about updates, you have to be on the same level between your existing controller or saved file and actual new controller. Now it's gonna get to, re to reboot and you will see the progress bar filling up, then the system will boot up and do the actual firmware update. So we'll have to wait for that, make sure you don't disconnect the power. Yeah, this device is now rebooting because the new firmware updated. And as you can see, the bar is loading up. So the update was verified, there was a message on this display. They refined the update and now it's rebooting and now it's loading up again. So once it's done, we should get our control back on the display. Okay, looks like it's up. Let's check. All right, so now we're back to the controller again and we go to UBNT, just new password is used and you see the IP address is correct and the firmware is updated. So we can go to performance just quickly to see the stats. That's the storage which we have on the flash internal one. So there is no need for disk unless you're using it for actual surveillance. So performance showing you the actual CPU memory and your disk usage. Yeah, eight cores of Qualcomm CPU is more than enough to drive this thing. From the network perspective and time zone settings, we'll have to do just set the proper time zone and that's pretty much it, what you'll have to do on the controller itself. Yeah, there is nothing else here which you can actually update. So you see the firmware update was done and the controller version is actually updated as well. So we'll check the controller side. Yeah, the version is 51020, and that's the one I want for actual control. Now we can go to controller. And from the controller perspective, the first thing we can do is just gonna go and restore from previous backup, which you actually got from, that's the backup I saved when the controller was running on my Mac OS. So we're loading this up and it's gonna go and confirm restore from backup. Make sure you're on the same firmware level for the controller on your previous backup and on the new Unify controller on the cloud key. So now I should be able to use my user password combination, which I used to have on my previous controller. And we're back, we are up and running. You see the welcome screen and this is my network, right? Pretty much free access points. Number of clients is not yet updated. I have more than nine but anything else is pretty much here all the settings everything should be here so as you can see the update for unify controller and migration from os based to cloud key based is very simple yeah the statistics are not there of course because we just started but uh, all the rest of the configuration is actually there and you will see the quality if everything is good 96 percent and all the channels which I'm using right now, all of that is reported here as well. So now it's showing everything. So you see 60 clients, three access points. So IP address is shown up and it's saying it's connected to the, as a cloud key two, gen two. So this one, it uh, doesn't have a hard drive, but there is internal storage to save the database. So, and it's also got a battery. So in terms of, in case of sudden power loss, then the database will not get corrupted and there is no need for UPS to keep this guy going. So it will, battery is enough power to actually safely shut down and keep the database integrity intact. Very impressive, very good. All right guys, so that's it for Unify controller setup I have right now on the cloud key. If you like this video, you know what to do. Give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends, especially for the people who are actually thinking on how to do this similar operation and migrate from the normal system to the cloud key. Uh, that video will be very useful for them. If you are planning to do that or you need more questions answered in regards to Unify infrastructure, you can put them in the comment down below and I will answer those when the time permits. Also, um, all the things which I featured in this video, I'm going to put links in the description down below so you can see them on Amazon. Some of them are pretty pricey, some of them are not. Depends on what infrastructure you require. You actually might go very easy and the price comparison is gonna be at par of if you compare similar products from TP-Link or from uh, Linksys or Cisco. 
So all the links of the products which we feature in this, in this video is going to be in the description down below. Also, what I have right now on the next videos which we're going to release very soon is um, how to migrate UBNT Edge Router Lite to the Unify Gateway. Uh, and that video is in works right now, but hopefully we're going to finish it soon. Uh, right now I'm working on resolving some cabling cable and connectivity things in prep for that migration. Once it's done, we will connect everything and I'll shoot another video showing you how to migrate Edge Router Lite with all your settings to USG without any problems. All right, with that, I want to thank you for watching and talk to you later. Peace.